Good morning YouTube and uh, this is a controller card out of a tumble dryer. Now, I've just been given it. It's the person who gave it to me said that there's no, no display or anything on the on the board. Um, so first thing to do would be have a good look around it. I don't know what the inputs and outputs are. So first thing we've got to do is find out how we power this thing. Now what I have found is if you look here this is like a little switch mode circuit which is a little transformer. And if you follow the tracks, you've got the outputs here, and then you go to this cap. So this is the output cap. That's a. It's rated for. Where's the rating? 25 volts. So the output of this should be less than 25 volts. So 24 or 12 volt. Uh, I don't know yet. This cap here is a 400 volt cap. So we can assume this is the input side of things, because what you do, you rectify your mains to a DC level, then you chop that up into your output voltage. So you're now looking here at the mains component, you can see this track here is on the negative side, that goes straight to this, con this connector here. Then you look on the positive side of the cap, you've got more, some more tracks here, you've got a resistor, a diode, so a single diode, that'll be a single rectifier diode, and some more input stuff. So your input comes in this socket, you've got a current limit resistor, single diode, then your main input capacitor and then it goes in this and chops it up and then you look on the other side the only stuff we've got on the other side that's probably something like a linear regulator or a FET and then we've got here a, um, typically looking because you've got a slot in it it's going to be high voltage so I've looked up the data sheet for this and this is a uh, DC converter for these little chips so and the pin 3 there is going to be your Hold up cap. So these chips can't run on 240 volt. They have to have an internal supply, which comes out on pin three, which goes to this cap here, and that supplies the power for the chip. So if that goes flat as well, we should see that. So what I'm going to do is solder a plug on the end of this because I haven't got the mating half, and measures the voltages. So we should have 400 volts on here. We should have this being chopped up, and we should have a DC output here. And we should have 12 or 24 or something like that volts there, and 5 volts here. So I'll do some soldering now. So I've got it wired up to the mains unbelievably dangerously. And I'm going to power it up now, and we'll just confirm the fault, make sure there's nothing that lights up. So I'll give it some power now. And this power is on. Power is on and there is nothing on the display. Right, so I now need to take some measurements. So power off. Always make sure your power is off before you touch it. So this is powered up now. So if we measure here on the input, 290 volts. That's rectified because it's past the diode. And then this goes to the cap. If we look this side, and we've got a few mini volts, and this is an inductor, I believe, and that goes off to this smoothing cap here. So this smoothing cap is not charging, so that would explain the problem. Interestingly, and weirdly enough, I would look on the output here. On one of these, we have 3.3 volts, so it doesn't make a lot of sense. The other one, though is zero and that's the other side so i'm not exactly sure where the 3.3 volts is coming from but there could be some other circuitry involved somewhere but yeah so here we have 290 volts dc other side nothing that's millivolts across that cap so let's have a look at that end so if we measure across that inductor and i do believe it is an inductor it wouldn't make sense in this type of circuit. It is overload, so there is no continuity there. We should be reading a few ohms maximum. So what I'm tempted to do is replace that with a wire link and just see if it works. Same inductor, but now it reads dead short. And the reason for this is because on the other side, I fit a wire link. So now I'm going to power it up and see what it does. So it's plugged in, and I'm going to turn the power on now that's disappointing still no display right we'll do some more measurements in oh wait a minute let me flick that switch 
Hey, happy days. It's bibbing and flashing at me. Right. So that is fixed and working. Uh, doesn't seem to be a reason. I'll leave it powered up for a few minutes. And if all is good, I'll tie it up with that wire link and we'll leave it there because it's just a noise suppression inductor. Can't see why it would be an issue not having it. Awesome. So I've uh, tied it up my wire link there and it's still working, the display is all on. So I'm gonna take my wires off. It's been on for a little while, hasn't blown up or anything, which is nice. So I'm gonna call that fixed. All right, there you go. Hopefully that gives you a bit of an insight into fault finding. I know it's a bit quick and a bit rushed, but yeah. Anyway, see you later, bye.